I got a question. How long is this dive? Um, oh, don't have FOMO. We are going to be going for tw about 24 hours, so get your rest. So you should stay up for the entire thing. Nope. See, and there, there comes Team Blue Water's bad <laughs> afternoon <laughs> advice. Um, no, uh, we will be going. We uh, Get your rest, and we'll probably hit bottom and it's the last start seeing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you should go for it. This is the shoulder, shoulder devil, shoulder angel situation here. <laughs> you should 100% stay up. I don't know why you wouldn't stay up 24 hours. Oh, two shoulder devils. Awesome. <laughs> Test one, two. We get rid of that banjo for you. Wow. Wait, why? Don't. No. Bye, banjo. No. As I said, we're doing shift change, so bits of I'm, our I'm team I'm not are... streaming that yet, so you can put as many banjos as you want. <laughs> bits of our team are switching out, so I don't under, how, Adam's here whoa. to crash our party. It's a flock of banjos. Hey. Are you going to catch the banjos? <laughs> Why did we just think of that now?
Greetings, viewers. 8 to 12 shift is in the control van, getting set up. Keep sending your questions to the chat. Sorry, guys. My ankle bracelet beacon uh, needs to go. It's, it's a condition of the parole, so... Hey, Dave. Go for Dave. Uh, why do they call it a salvo when they change the arrangement of the screens? Uh, you're firing a, a bunch of things off at once. Oh. It's, uh, it's a routing switcher term for uh, making a, a whole bunch of routes all at the same time. Firing same. a salvo. Nice. Hey, Jess, can you turn on the still cam, please? Yeah, shirting. It should be on. Huh. Does not like it. Okay. Let me know if you don't get it. Okay, thank you. Good evening. We are still descending on our dive of unnamed Seamount D. About halfway down to where we're headed, 3,700 meters or so. Ooh, I was wrong. B. We're on B now. <laughs> we just finished D. This is B. Hey, Adam. Yeah. The viewer wants to know who decides on these dive locations. Uh, I, I decide on the dive locations in consultation with anyone who is willing to consult with me. <laughs> uh, we have a, a kind of a plan to, for most of these seamounts, to go from the base up to the, the summit. And what we've been trying to do is to visit as many of the seamounts as we can and to approach them from uh, different directions, you know, north, south, east, west. Uh, so this is the first time we're coming from the south to the north on one of these seamounts. Uh, on most of the first dives, we tended to follow ridge lines, which seem to be kind of hot spots for biology, but on the last couple, uh, we've been spending some time in the valleys between the 
the ridge lines, which are actually kind of the rift zones of the volcano where volcanic activity was concentrated. Uh, and so I, I look at the bathymetry and kind of plot out a course that uh, makes sense within all those parameters. But of course, when we get on the bottom, we can change our minds a bit uh, based on what we're seeing and uh, you know, where the observations take us. In exploration dives like this, it's you, know, you kind of want to cover some ground, you know, see as much as you can, cover different depth ranges. In other oceanographic studies, sometimes you want to go to a particular place, like a hydrothermal vent, because you need to collect samples there. Uh, just kind of depends what your activity is, but these are really fun because we get to see a lot of the seafloor and, and hopefully see things that are new or in places we didn't expect them uh, and collect samples along the way. We have a question from a viewer about uh, questioning why some of these animals that are so deep would have color if there's no light. And according to Steve, one of our marine biologists, apparently sometimes it could just be the color of a bioactive compound that the organism has that is used to deter predators. And he noted that often when they are collecting the specimens from Hercules and preserving them in the lab, when they put them in ethanol, a lot of that color comes right out, which is pretty interesting. One of our viewers saw the video of a giant isopod, I guess, on our website, and said it reminded them of a lobster tail and wondered if they're edible. Would you eat a giant isopod? Uh, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if it was, if I, you know, if it was certainly not out of the shell like that, it looks, it looks unappetizing. What about <coughs> out of the shell and deep fried? Oh, yeah, I would. probably would. Catch yeah. up. Isopod fingers. <laughs> <laughs> probably if anything's good in an air fryer. It might be good, you know. Air fryer, giant isopod. I mean, I think <laughs> people used to view lobster the same way. You know? Yeah. I think giant versions of small animals, which is kind of weird, you know? <laughs> Could a lobster, though, be considered a giant version of a shrimp? That's true. That one doesn't seem weird. I was thinking more of, like, uh, tapirs, you know, like extra-large rodents. Mm. <laughs> Why is that what your mind goes to there, Adam? <laughs> uh, I don't know. But that's not, it's not true, right? A lion is an extra large cat. That's not weird. A giant tortoise, yeah. Oh, I thought you meant for eating. Okay. Oh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't eat the giant tortoises. Or lions, honestly. <laughs> yeah. People definitely did eat giant tortoises. Though. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Mark that down as a conversation killer. <laughs> <laughs>
We how actually how had many a you got question. Back there? We actually had a question we didn't get to two nights ago. That was, if you had to eat one thing that we had seen or collected, which one would it be, and how would you prepare it? <laughs> this might be the time for that question. Uh, the shark. Once again, you can list that <laughs> on, the, on your conversation killer. <laughs> <laughs> what what would you guys eat? The coral would not be good. Crunchy. <laughs> so justified. <laughs> Maybe octa coral. I don't know. There was a lot of slime in the lab today. I'm not sure I want to eat any of these organisms. See, what I'm picking up here is that I should have not answered that question. <laughs> I felt compelled. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting this. <laughs> Hi, Colton. Thanks for joining us. I was thinking of a sea cucumber. You know, that would that would be pretty good. Throw it on some sushi. People definitely eat sea cucumbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she be it. Which one was, it was one of the corals that looked plump today, right? Pink and plump? Juicy. Juicy. <laughs> <laughs> you said that about a lot of the corals, though. <laughs> I'm not really sure which one you're referring to. I, <laughs> I am not... Uh, well, whatever. I'll I'll take the hit on that. <laughs> Might have been someone else who said that they were juicy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been. I mean, bubblegum coral sounds good. I think I'd go with a drip of barnacles. Drip. <laughs> oh, that might be good. How barnacle do you eat a barnacle? Drip. On the half shell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really small shooter. Throw it back. <laughs> How about that acorn worm? <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh yeah, Sarah. How did that? How did that do? Uh, you don't it was have in to. about three parts, right? <laughs> yeah. And a lot of slime. <laughs> oh yeah, I was <laughs> running water, so I, um, I don't know, but I did hear it was many parted. Yeah. So. Lots of slime. So who's the captain of the hype train tonight? Is it Rennie or is it Adam? Or is or, it Jake? Or is it I think Jess? it's a little squishy it's, yeah. here going. <laughs> I could do it. What kind of oh lucky gosh. lucky That's clothes your... do you have today? I'm wearing my lucky socks. <laughs> there nice. you go. They're tucked into his pants as They're well. They're tucked into my jeans, yes. <laughs> I'm washing my Christmas Sandoval cat. style? <laughs> yes. I tried it yesterday. I could last like 30 seconds. <laughs> this is Not for everyone. Not for me. But it's only for the cool. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I don't know. My Christmas cat socks are in the washer right now. <laughs> oh, got some time in the washer. <laughs> we do a lucky sack day or sack <laughs> lucky sock. <laughs> lucky sack. Lucky sack day. When I was a child, that's, we would wear our lucky sack to school. Yeah. It was in the 1940s, I think. Yep. <laughs> Burlap? Yeah. That's all there was. Yep. It's the only fabric that was. Adam, a child of the Great Depression. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. Dust bowl. Dust Bowl, yeah. Dust Bowl child. Incredibly short soup lines on this ship. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Sod home. <laughs> Darren wants to know what the weirdest thing you have ever found on a dive is, and where was it? I mean, I think this group, this group of people is, is a <laughs> little strange. <laughs> but I've learned, with this, is this question a trap, or can I, can I answer this? <laughs> I think you should answer. It depends <laughs> on what your answer is. That. Uh, <laughs> strange, um, okay, strange, unexpected? Is that weirdest, what we're, weirdest. Weirdest, okay, weirdest. All right, I got one. Uh, Ocean bottom seismometer, which is not in itself weird to find on the seafloor, mm. but uh, encased in a lava flow. Oh. That we then wow. used the ROV as kind of a battering ram to break it free and send it back to the surface. Wow. Very cool. It's kind of ironic. 
Oh, this isn't on this is not unexpected, but it is weird. But uh, for Ocean Networks Canada, they put action figures on all their platforms, <laughs> and then they name all of the um, the plugs after their employees' dogs. Uh, that's cute. It's actually fairly uh, it's kind of useful. Sweet. Yeah, because <laughs> they're all named something different. Are the platforms named after the action figure? Uh, no, no, but you like you can say, oh, we're going. To, oh, and then also their prior one of the leads, he retired, and they made a bobblehead of him, and now he's on one of the platforms. So they do say, yeah, we need to go head over to Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going with the uh, single yellow flip flop. Before Lisa could say it, sorry. I'm, I'm claiming um, the flip flop. Claiming the flip flop this time around. Tonight's our last chance to find the other one. You know, if we were yeah. to see two <laughs> flip flops right next to each other, it might be even weirder. Actually, oh. yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That's true. What happened to that guy? That's dark. That's very dark. <laughs> Jess, what have you seen weird? The weirdest thing we've seen. Come back to me. Yeah, put a pin in that one. I'm still thinking on it. I heard you kind of like, you made a little tune out of that there. What if we did this whole watch as like a musical? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can anyone in here An actually acapella. sing? Can have, what if, what if we did that? Sea shanties involved? <laughs> Could be. If that's what your character does, then <laughs> your character shanty away. <laughs> In the play. I'll uh, be the chimney sweep. <laughs> I'm the narrator. <laughs> so I don't have to sing. Actually, I'll be the type tree casting. in the background. <laughs> tree. Renny the narrator's typecasting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <that's right. laughs> don't put it yourself in a box, man. Yeah. I'll branch out. Be the lead. <laughs> We saw, I'm going to say a second thing, just because I'm thinking of it. We saw blue coral. Oh, and, yeah, those uh, are interesting. I think it was Jarvis. Yeah. Jarvis, I remember that, yeah. Incredible. And then there were so many overhangs, and I just, I still can't get a grasp of the geology there. It just was, like, made no sense. And uh, there were cor so many overhangs and so many cor like large fans that were just upside down. You'd get so disoriented about where you were, and then they were blue. I was like, "What is <laughs> happening?" <here?" laughs> Doctor yeah, Seuss. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, it was on the west side of Jarvis, I think. Rennie, on the on the Pescadero Basin cruise, uh -huh. there was that hydrothermal vent. It was the weirdest one I've ever seen. It looked like a tree had been chopped off and totally clear blazing hot fluid was blasting oh, yeah. out of it like, like the a big fire large hydrant. diameter that was wow. nuts that was the one we put a plaque in front of right yeah 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 just you know they went back there really and uh yeah sent us pictures of that plaque yeah it's cool yeah it was just it was strange i don't think i've seen anything they normally it's a much smaller aperture yeah and it and it was precipitating calcite it was weird yeah did any of you seen the david hasselhoff crab <laughs> oh what oh no. what is that it's I one of the hairy that. crabs that lives near the like a yeti crab, crab kind of? yeah. Yeah. yeah except it's mostly got <laughs> chest hair i believe yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it looks just like him has his hair cut <laughs> oh. that's getting searched right now <laughs> well be careful I know, I might get blocked. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen the, the, the hoff, you know? <laughs> the hairy Antarctic crab that was dubbed the hoff? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. But I did love, was he in Knight Rider? I don't know. Yes. I don't know. Oh, that was such a good show. Uh, I don't whoa, see whoa. the resemblance. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, seven, six, we're going to 
3731. Yeah, I have another 1,400 left. Cool. Keep up their hype train. Yep. <laughs> One of our viewers is uh, recalling the story Allison shared about the octopus and the rice cooker. That was a good story. That was a good story. Are we at 200 for the sub bottom? Yeah. Did any of you get to see the zombie fish from the last expedition? No, it wasn't on our watch, I guess. What is, is what that is, a is fish? That? Zombie fish. Is that like the name of a fish or is yeah. a nickname? Uh, or common, its given name, common sorry. Name. Common name, huh. Got to believe that one was named more recently than <laughs> Shauna Klops. <laughs> what did the zombie fish look like? I'll look it up. I don't know what it looks like. A Google search does not help. <laughs> but <laughs> they um they said it was like in the middle of um dying, like a terrible <laughs> death. So it was like <laughs> flopping around. So on that's the a good floor, name. Like half eaten away. I don't know. Yeah. I, I never saw it on the video. Oh. <laughs> that sounds awful. Oh, yeah. I traumatized a few people. <laughs> yeah. That's how they reproduce. They're <laughs> bitten by another zombie fish. Interesting. Wow. Is that, is that flickering in the starboard cam? Is that. It might just the, be in the camera. Is it on the other camera? Just no, it's on the other camera there. Not the other one. Oh, I see. Other. Sometimes there's something floppy. Looks like camera to me. Play a camera, yeah. That stuff, you know. <laughs> oh, one of our viewers has clarified. I actually saw this in the live feed from home. It was a fish that was attacked and seemed to be dying while Herc had video on. It kept sinking and then stopping as if dead, and then it would keep going, and it looked like kind of eelish, like a rat tail maybe. Oh, so oh. <laughs> it wasn't 
more of a nickname. Yeah, I remember seeing that. It Probably was... not long for the world then. Oh, I, I understood that it wasn't attacked, that that was something <laughs> else, but I don't know. Hmm. Conflicting reports. It must have been the 4 to 8 watch. I'll ask Antonel. Rennie, does your screen say anything about the wind and the current relative to this swell? Um, not relative to the swell. I mean, we, we, we have the wind is measured. The current is a proxy. It's everything that the ship is feeling that isn't the wind in, in order to stay on station because we don't have that uh, sensor. We don't have a sensor that does that. And then the swell... Uh, no. is a beam well you know that's what i thought too but when we were out on the deck at launch we it's i don't know we were kind of rolling in i don't know if it's a larger secondary swell or if it's just the period of the swell that we're kind of half facing into but it's making us roll oh so it's really. not coming at us sideways it, if, it could be there could be it could be part of it that's doing that or a an element of the swell, but we seem to be just rolly and we're looking out on the horizon like what is causing this. Couldn't really define it. Maybe we're light, light on fuel, water. I'm sorry, you don't feel water? I said maybe Seems like a disability. <laughs> we're light on fuel and possibly oh, light, light on, on light fuel water. and water. I thought you said you don't feel water oh <laughs> i don't feel be. water that's why you don't like swimming i come out to see it just be as close as i can <laughs> to it. it's just out of reach <laughs> yeah colton's asking about our water temperature and it is currently 35 degrees fahrenheit 1.7 c you can see that data right on our web page to the right side of the stream. Surface water is like over 25, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 25, 26. So we expect this to be a 24 hour? Is that a dive? That's what the plan says. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The deciding factor is in the center back row right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take it back up. It's a zero hour dive. We should stay on watch for the whole dive. <laughs> oh, Lisa. <Nah>. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us could stay on watch for the whole dive. <laughs> I might need a nap. <laughs> I don't have enough Altoids for that. <laughs> 12 on, 12 off, starting now. <laughs> I ran out of Diet Coke. Oh, no. Ooh. I just had an iced coffee before I came in. I don't know how long it's going to last. If we ration these plums. <laughs> <laughs> I got some peanuts supplements. <laughs> the plums. I brought the whole almonds tonight. The spicy sriracha almonds. Oh. Yeah. Everybody will be lucky. You'll get the whole one. Yes, please. All right. Somebody says the zombie fish was determined to be a hammer jaw. Hammer jaw. Hammer jaw. Hammer jaw. Cool name. Excellent. I was so shocked. And the maximum depth that Hercules can dive to is 4,000 meters, which is a little over 13,000 feet. Okay, what's the best thing you've seen during an ascent or a descent? Mine is the sharks. The sharks are amazing. There's three yesterday, today, whatever that was. I got to flip Which over one? to the live feed and show one of the classes I was teaching yesterday. That was awesome. 
Uh, Deep Star, yeah, Jelly. That was my favorite. See, we saw one in the water column. We saw one close to the bottom. And then, actually, on shakedown of this year, we saw another one while we were ascending. Uh, just kind of caught, caught a glimpse of it in Hercules. Did not spend time with it like we did with the first one. There's great highlight reels of both of those deep story uh, jellies. Nice. My answer is kind of lame, but it's the blue color and Aww. how it changes as you go down. I'm also never disappointed because it's actually, it's always there. <laughs> mm. Is that the bar low? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice answer. Please, someone find some rocks for Adam to look at soon. <laughs> yeah. soon. Let's find the seafloor. Not <laughs> until I read this four-page sonnet that I wrote about the water. <laughs> <coughs> Blue. <laughs> I cannot feel the water. <laughs> oh, you, did, you wrote it in my perspective? <laughs> yeah, I wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> Rennie's point of view. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> the, the water looks so pretty when Hercules was going in tonight. The lights. Yeah, really that's a beautiful blue. view of it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we'll have a night recovery tomorrow. I th I think that's the coolest when you when there's it's completely black and then there's just suddenly like the blue glow starts to come up. Yeah, nice. love that too. What's the longest dive that Hercules has done? Seventy-two, 72. hours. Yeah, that's what yeah. I hear. Roundabout. Argus has done a. Well over a hundred hour dive. Wow. Wait. On purpose? Yeah, Hercules, <laughs> it was an Argus only. Uh, um, yeah, not counting the time that they were not powered. The vacation. Yeah. <laughs> they just wanted to get away for a while. Yeah. They're tired of coming up and down, you know? They just wanted to... Just, uh, <laughs> that's the, the whole progress. idea of an autonomous ROV. Had, I don't think it was good from the start. Yeah. <laughs> Start we were just for ahead, of the time, ahead of our time. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was, it was an Argus only dive. We were using it as a side scan tow sled at the oh. time. Cool. It was for the clipper? Yeah. Looking for a downed plane from the 1930s off of American Samoa. really cool to be there in Samoa and know that it's kind of the bay in American Samoa. It's for, you know, high relief mountains, essentially on a horseshoe shape. And the way that they would have to land the planes in the bay was to drop over that mountain. So they'd have to descend super quickly and land oh, in the wow. bay for the seaplanes. And, they didn't uh, come in through the open end of the horseshoe? No, you know, <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're telling the story, man. I don't want to. <laughs> no, it's actually, it's kind of closed on all sides. It's just that the bay, like, has an opening, but it kind of snakes around, if I'm remembering right. I have to look at a map right now. But, yeah. Um, yeah, and then same for takeoff, I think. It's really, it's kind of like planes of that time. Seems like it was asking for a lot. And that was the uh, Expedition Amelia? It's the Clipper, right? It was a Samoan Clipper. It was actually oh, okay. one of two planes that went down in the 1930s we were looking for that year. Oh, for two. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it was a, it was a really <laughs> cool trans-Pacific flight of, I think it was a mail carrier. And uh, they used to have to use some of the remote Pacific Islands as stops because they couldn't make it all the way from New Zealand to the U.S. 
So your description of the bay made me think of something the ancient Hawaiians did, where they'd make these uh, gates at the front of, of bays, and the openings would be small enough for small fish to swim in, but as they got bigger and ate, they couldn't swim out. It was oh. like uh, old school aquaculture. Mm. Oh. And uh, one time I was out there doing some work on lava flows and um, some of these had been covered up by lava flows. But if you measured the uh, magnetics, so when the lava flow cools, all the little magnetic minerals are aligned with the magnetic field. But the walls that they built for these ponds, they put the rocks in all different orientations so you could find where the old walls were within the lava flow. Hmm. Yeah. Something similar in um, Galapagos, one of the islands at Las Grietas, is like this fissure, volcanic fissure, and there's, I think they're parrotfish? I can't remember now. Something in there. And they, it's open to the ocean, I think, but they enter in and then can't leave or don't want to leave. And so they grow quite large in there. Yeah, that's, and you can like make that hike down to there's an awesome beach at the end of it. Uh, Tor Tortuga Bay? Yeah. Yeah. It's like the finest sand. And a ton of sharks around there too. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was in that water. <laughs> and the marine iguanas. Do they have uh, turtles? Is that uh, the name? You know, oh. I know there's iguanas, but it depends the time <laughs> of year. I think, but bay. the <laughs> tortoises spend a lot of time up in the highlands. Why would they call it Tortuga Bay? Uh, it might be oh. that so tons of sailors used to stop there and get those tortoises for food on long voyages. So maybe that's where they loaded up tortugas. Just spitball in here. Yep. <laughs> I, I go back and check out James Michener's Galapagos if you throw <laughs> one of those. I would go back there in a heartbeat. It was a great, oh, great place. It, it is one of my favorite places. And so not too far from where you're talking about, Rennie, there's, a, there's like a breakfast place right by the harbor. Yeah. That is the best breakfast in the universe, not even just on our planet. They had the the patacones, which uh, is like tostadas. It's like the um, twice fried plantains. Yeah, the bolón completo. So it's like this giant softball size thing of plantains. Oh, there's that one, yeah. And cheese that's the, fried. The local oh. cheese, it's yeah. like farmer's cheese kind of. And then there's some like beef stew, but you can get. Um, Menudo, if you want, and then a couple eggs on that, and you don't you pr you don't have to eat for like thirty six hours afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delicious. It's so good. Yeah. A viewer would like to know if any of you have been involved in exploration of the Mid Atlantic Ridge. Yeah, I have. Uh, most recently did some work at a uh, spreading segment at 14 degrees north, which is where it's up there in the, let's see, late 80s, they did a dredge there. That's where you drag like a metal bag across the seafloor to pick up rocks. And when they brought the rocks up on deck, they started popping. Whoa. And <laughs> uh, it's because they have quite a lot of gas in them, trapped in vesicles and they're at high pressure, but when you bring them up, that gas is trying to expand. It goes like pop, 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 pop That's rocks. Cool. Yeah, and so we went back to look for those and try to understand how they formed. And uh, on the first dive, we found them. It's pretty wow. remarkable. Were they abundant, or you just got lucky? Uh, we got smart, Rennie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of knew where the dredge was. We could see what the geologic features were. And so we went to a couple places that they might be from and uh, found them. And then they're 
all along a, a ridge that's, I don't know, like 12 kilometers long or something like that. So, so what was special about them that made them pop? Well, so that's the question is if they if they formed like deep in the mantle uh, and the mantle melted a little bit and all the gas went into it and then they just came straight up that's one way they could get very gas rich the other is that they formed in a normal way and gas exolving from deeper melts kind of percolated in and accumulated and uh, our paper suggested that it was the latter that it was accumulated gases rather than uh, kind of Carried? primary gas, okay. yeah. So then okay. does it have to erupt relatively quickly after it accumulates that gas? Um, uh, secondary gas impulse? It doesn't have to. I mean, it'd probably go a little faster because it's got more bubbles, but we're talking about, like, you know, 12% bubbles by volume, whereas yeah. a pumice is, like, 99%. Right. So, um, but yeah, I think it, you know the bubbles are small, so they take hundreds of years to travel, like you know, a kilometer through through the magma. So it doesn't have to be super fast, but uh, could be even that the accumulated gas triggered the eruption, at, you know, at the same time. But still, still a lot of work to be done on those rocks. Is there any chemical reaction that would create gas? Problem. Yeah, well, yeah, so at a place like uh, Mount Etna in Italy, uh -huh. you know, there the volcano is going through a whole bunch of carbonate sediments, and it's uh, picking up CO2 from those carbonates as it, as it passes through. So that is one way to get some external gas in. But these, you know, being at a mid-ocean ridge, it's a kind of as vanilla as you can get. It's whatever the mantle is yeah. there. Have they been found other places? Uh, there was some found on the Reykjanes Ridge up near Iceland. Uh, not a ton of places, but there's a few reports of them being found various places. But they're really cool. We actually, so we you know bring the rocks up like we do here. We put them in bins to dry. We had to put lids on them because they were shooting rocks wow. across the lab and like putting this rock in that bin and <laughs> wow we do have a video of them popping for the first time and it is the nerdiest thing you could imagine <laughs> like all these everybody. geologists oh are like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a viewer's asking were they basalt or carbonate they were basalt with uh, you know, about six weight percent CO2. I think that's right, or maybe it was less than that, but some significant amount of di of dissolved and exolved carbon dioxide. So some of it in the liquid lava, and some of it in the as gas in the bubbles. How long does it take for them to pop once they reach the surface? Well, so that. You know, we've had these questions before about have you put a hydrophone on the vehicle. So I did put a hydrophone on to see if we could hear them on the way up. Um, but it took them kind of getting out and getting into the lab, I think, as a temperature thing. So, oh, so they warmed up enough right. and they started popping. It's like popcorn. Yeah. Could be, yeah. You're looking at the push core cam? Do the lights. You could cycle the lights, right? Oh, that could that could be it.
You were asked how long we have all been doing dives together. This team has been diving for what a week and a day. But we have some long timers here. It does feel a lot longer. Though. Yeah, it always feels longer. Yeah, I think it's because you sleep twice a, twice a day. That's what it is for me. I think <laughs> it's like yeah, every it's time true. I wake Twi up, it's two a new days. Day to me. <laughs> two it's days that many days, day. but it's double that many times. Right, <laughs> we've come into this room. The cycle, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we got a question from the viewer specifically for Jake. Oh. That's amazing. What, uh, it says, what did you get your girlfriend for Christmas? <laughs> huh. It sounds like she's watching there, Jake. I think she might have just typed in. Yeah, seems a bit pointed. Uh, you're trying to pull a fast one. I know you are. <laughs> Not today. Not today. <laughs> I didn't catch him a bit sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good try. Okay, nothing yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you like Aloha a shirts. <laughs> <laughs> There's a 7 Eleven across the street yeah. from the port. Oh, <laughs> and a big gulp. The supply chain's <laughs> killing me, all right? <laughs> this covered this Slurpee nuts. was totally frozen when I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a commemorative cup. Baby. Here's this manganese nodule. It's not coal, I promise. <laughs> they had sushi, too. Chocolate covered macadamia nuts. Yeah. yeah. I would. I mean, if I was your girlfriend, I'd be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's this sushi. I transported 16 hours of flying. <laughs> Questionable. Yeah. Did it. Killed the conversation again. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I marked down these kills <laughs> on the top of my monitor here. Just a notch for every one. You Pass have a hit list the... back there? You got <laughs> Pass it on to the next watch. <laughs> one of our viewers wants to know why we're starting south of the seamount this time. Yeah, so we've been trying to approach the seamounts from different directions. I zoom out. It's with channel the three right now. intention of trying to understand if there's like a prevailing current direction that uh, you know, would impact where the biology is located. And in this case, uh, we've come in from the kind of northwest, from the east, from the southwest. This south is a different way. looking seamount. The yeah, ridges are really quite not as... as a cohesive as the other ridges have been. Yeah, it's way more ridges. It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Is there a reason we're dropping into a valley and not onto a ridge? Yeah, so we did that for the first time yesterday cuz Bob was interested in whether the you know, the micro nodules kind of collect at the at the base. Okay. And I found the valley to be really cool. Like we saw a lot of different stuff in there, a ton of fish and uh, acorn worm and things like that. So mm -hmm. I thought it was definitely worth doing again. Yeah. Because it's a different. How did this increase? One of our viewers suggests that we all need to get the macadamia nut Hershey's Kisses. Ooh, Ooh that sounds good. I don't know. There's some pretty good Hawaiian brands of uh, macadamia chocolate. Been partial to recently. So there's another nut in Hawaii called the Kukui nut mm. that is uh, su super super oily and was used as like a candle. Huh. Oh, neat. Huh. They just put a wick on a nut. I think they would like put a on a string and light them up. Very cool. Uh, you got a, some forward way or something? A little bit, yeah. Okay. So, 
acting funny. Does Herc want to spin on the way down? No, we put some, we put about 20, 30% forward way on it. Um, just so that we don't free fall, get the tether wrapped up around the yeah. vehicles and have a bad day. It's changing its head. We could go with the acrobatic snail approach. <laughs> <laughs> Twirling through the water. <laughs> One could do that if they were inclined. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like a current. That yeah. Don't watch it. I think this was current here. See, so they had no laterals on. Yeah. I was curious why it's like going back. Yeah. I wonder if there's current is that way. So then it caused it to go there and now it's pushing you back. We yeah. had a question earlier about whether we've had hitchhikers. And we did yesterday, right? On Hercules? Yeah, we did. We had a coral come up um, unexpectedly on the bottom of Hercules. Uh, last time we had a nodule resting on the porch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, man. I think uh, like little jelly things from the uh, midwater have also come up on the vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, we have to, when we wash down the vehicles, we get a little bit of jelly on you sometimes. Does it sting? Uh, it tingles. There's another suggestion, the caramel popcorn with macadamia nuts. Oh, yeah, that's oh, just, oh, really someone had that. Level, yeah. that was <laughs> so dangerous. dangerous to open. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion. Adam, can you talk about the focus for this dive? Yeah, so uh, sense, 200. in a general sense, we're aiming to collect a series of samples from different depths along the, uh, or up the seamount in order to look at the composition of the manganese crust relative